So guys, before we get into this amazing interview that I have with Stephen O'Young, I would just like to say real quick, rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Um, he's played so many roles. He was the Black Panther. Um, he was Jackie Robinson, James Brown, Thurgood Marshall. He was just so much. And on top of uh, Chadwick Boseman came up because uh, my profile picture on Instagram is this picture right here. And we were just talking about it. And yeah, I just want to let you guys in on that uh, tragic loss. And I hope you all enjoy this interview and that it brings you some enjoyment. All right. Peace out. I love you all. And um, stay safe. What's up, Jay? How are you? I'm good. Thank How you for having you? me. Absolutely. It's an honor to have you on. You're uh, the for first, voice <laughs> first voice actor I've had on. So it's an honor to be speaking to you. So thank oh, you. So it's much. an honor to be here. First of all, I just want to say, wow, Chadwick Boseman, huh? Yeah, um, let's just, let's just give it up for Chadwick Boseman. That guy, right. uh, look, I'm the biggest hater in the world, okay? <laughs> when I see other people's stuff, a lot of times I'm like, ah, I'm not impressed, I don't really care about it. But Chadwick Boseman was even for me, and I'm not even black, it's just an inspirational <laughs> right. figure, right? And I like people are saying, oh, you know, people are all agreeing too that I talk to, they're like, I don't even care about celebrities, but they're, you know, this one hit different. Right. And it's just like, you know, Black Panther, not just Black Panther, but this right. whole body of work, uh, it just transcended just regular pop culture, you know, regular celebrity culture. And he seemed like such a, he seemed, and he was by all accounts, just what an amazing, intelligent, elegant dude. Right. You know, and then for him to, to go, you know, so soon in his career is just shocking, but also it's just amazing what he was able to accomplish. Right. You know? So just big ups to Chadwick Boseman today, you know? Right. Big yeah. Up. I, I woke, I can't, I really can't believe it. I woke up, I was looking at my phone. I didn't want to, I didn't want to look at my phone when I first woke up because I knew I was going to see some stuff from last yeah. night, yeah. but I did it anyway. So I opened my phone. I was just like, this, this, this doesn't feel real. This takes me back to when um Stan Lee passed away. I was right. I was in my computer class and I was like scrolling through Instagram. I saw Stan Lee had died. I was like, y'all got to stop playing around. This isn't funny. Like April Fools is in April. He died in November. Right. And I looked everywhere. Stan Lee was dead. I was like, that's impossible because like it's Stan Lee. You know what I mean? Like he he is the guy. And I just. I, I still have trouble being like, Stanley's really, like, he's not here. Like, that. Yes. I ask you about that and just, like, a bunch of other stuff. Like, did you get to meet Stanley or? I never got to meet Stanley, oh, but, uh, you know, obviously he was in the game, the Spider-Man game. Yeah. One of, one of his final performances. So, yeah, I mean, all of that hits, it hits hard, you know. Uh, it, it, you made a good point, too. It, it does feel unreal. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not big into celebrating other celebrities or right. even warning people I don't know. I'm just right. not. But yeah. But to your point, it's like, it doesn't feel real. Like you expect these guys, these people to, to live forever. It's right. Be part of us forever, right? Right. Uh, so when it happens like this, it's just, it's shocking, right? It reminds us all that life is so short. But again, uh, what an amazing guy and, and right. to keep his battle with cancer private as well because he knew right because he knew the way that we all would be so uh what an example to to live by i was just thinking the other day i was like man i'm very immature you know <laughs> sometimes i feel like like yeah. i'm an older dude you know chadwick is not that much older than me right right but i feel and i act sometimes like a like a 16 year old you know like like just young right and i was like right. when am i gonna be a man and then you know, you think of Chadwick Boseman, it's like, wow, that's, that's a man, that's an adult. That's, that's right. somebody that put their, their time on this planet to good use. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what a great, yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I just want to say real yeah. quick, cause I like to do this. Uh, thank you for giving your career to acting, for making people's day better, especially like times like this or a pandemic, you know, you're just giving it out there, making the best for people. And just, just thank you so much for that. It's like a real, that's really something big that you've done. So thank you. For that. Hey, thank you for being interested. You know, Absolutely. when you reached out uh, to my people, it was like, Oh, that's very nice. You know, it's like, <laughs> because, you know, as actors, we try to, uh, uh, you know, this, like we try to, to get our stuff out there. We, we want, uh, you know feedback you want interaction so right for for it to actually 
for, for you to even reach out and say, hey, I want to talk. It's like, yeah, thank you. Right on. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So let's dive right into it. So how would you describe your upbringing? Uh, you know, my upbringing was <laughs> very chill. I have the boringest story. You know, most, <laughs> I feel like most Asian American actors they kind of have the same story, right? They're like, oh, you know, my parents are strict. Growing up, uh, parents of immigrants, right? It's like, we all are, right? It's like, okay, grew up, parents are strict, and they didn't want me to pursue my dream. It's like, no, dude, my parents were very chill about it, you know? Right. Uh, so they, they always knew I was like a cut up. They always knew I was attention hungry, right? right. And, and my father was an engineer. My mother was a social worker. So, okay. you know, they had the professional careers. And uh, even with that, they were able to just give me the kind of freedom to say, hey, okay, you know, try it. What, what my father literally said was, okay, you get a college degree uh, in some kind of useful thing, right? Right. And then... Yeah, I'll give you until you're 30 to get your first acting job. If you can't do it by 30, then you got to go do something else, son. You know, so <laughs> I had a lot of leeway. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my, and I grew up in a, a small town, Cerritos, California, which actually has a lot of uh, people of color, a lot of Asians. Uh, so I had no idea I was a minority until oh. I went to college. <laughs> I was like, Seriously, my high school, Whitney High School, big up Whitney. Like, uh, you know, we are, our, our demographic is like 99% Asian, like all kinds of Asian, Korean, Chinese, uh, Japanese, Filipino, uh, right. Southeast Indian, you know, Indian, whatever, right? What have you. Uh, so I went to college, though, in UC San Diego. And that's when I was like, wait a minute. Oh, I, I'm Asian. Oh, <laughs> we. <laughs> We're not the majority here. Oh, wow. Oh. Right. Yeah. So I had a very sheltered, very chill upbringing. So, yeah. Okay. okay nice. I kind of relate to that, too. I was born in Queens, and it's okay. very different from where I live right now. Like, in Queens, it's like, it's everything. Like, it's you get Asians, Hispanics, people of color. Like, it's, it's mostly, like, it's diverse. But down right. here, it's very... You feel it. <laughs> you, I'll just say, like, you feel it. We, we got clicks. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We, so. we, have, we have the diversity, but they're definitely clicks. Right, for right, sure. right. For sure, yeah, yeah. So what got you interested in the entertainment industry? Like, what movie was you saw, you were like, this is what I got to do. I oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. Uh, ironically, right, uh, in my senior year of high school, I was, I was doing plays and stuff because that was just fun, right? right. I was like, how else do you get attention? I never <laughs> expected to do this as a career. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I literally thought, okay, I'm going to go be a politician or be a lawyer or something like that. Politician right? or something. Yeah, because I like to talk. So, hey, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but then my senior year of high school is when The Matrix came out, the first Matrix. Oh. And I was like, oh, my God, that blew me away, man. Right. Watching Keanu Reeves, of all people, do Wushu, I was like, what is this magical whatnot? <laughs> so right out of high school, then I started to get really into martial arts. My father was already, you know, he already taught me some basic martial arts, uh, wrestling, judo, stuff like that growing up as a kid. But I never thought of using that, again, as a career until, right. again, I saw The Matrix and I was like, I want to do that. Right. So right out of high school, you know, I go to college and I linked up with a, a wushu teacher from China. And I was just like, I want make me like Keanu Reeves. So it's weird. You know, a lot of people are like oh, Jackie Chan. Yes, obviously. And Jet Li, right? That, but that yeah. for me, the love of those guys came after I saw The Matrix. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. And then right out of college, I, I again, still didn't really know what I was going to do. But my father uh, and mother, they gave me this good advice. They said, well, you should do whatever you would do for free. Mm -hmm. You know, try that. And I was like, well, OK, you know, I would I, I would try acting. All right. We're, we're in L.A. Right. We're, we're already in California. And, and, you know, people move from all over the world to California right. to try it. And I was like, we're here. And I kind of have this bug. And yeah, so let me give it a go. And it's kind of, you know, I've lucked out so far. 
That's awesome, man. That's really dope. Um, what was your first acting experience like? What was your first go at it? Were you nervous? Were you scared? Was it bad? Was it oh, bad? yeah. It was all of that stuff, man. I think <laughs> what was my first, like, my first real acting slash stunt gig was, like, a day on this film called Legion with Paul Bettany, okay? I was looking, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and before that, I had done, like, kind of extra stuff. The extra stuff was, like, very depressing. I'll be honest. I was like, I don't know how people can, you know, they don't treat extra. They, back then, they didn't treat extras very well. Right. They, like cattle. Yeah. I was like, what is this? And long days. And I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. But again, luckily, I was able to, through stunts, get on this, this day for Legion. And, you know, it, it was, uh, was nerve-wracking because I'm like, uh, you got the cameras, you got all these people yeah. here. It was out of state. It was in New Mexico. I'd never been to New Mexico oh, wow. before. I had, to, I had to, like, basically put myself up for free myself to go. <laughs> I paid to work. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm meeting Paul Bettany, and I'm just like, uh, uh, don't say something stupid. You know, that's kind <laughs> of a, that's the theme of my career. Don't say anything stupid. stupid. But, yeah, it was <laughs> nerve-wracking. <laughs> everybody. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any way you cannot be nervous or scared, you know? You got the whole crew looking at you, like, you got one job. Say your line or do your action. And you're just right. like, oh, I'm going to screw up. Uh, but, <laughs> right. Luckily, it didn't screw up too bad, and uh, yeah, here we are. That's awesome. Wow. That's really cool. That's what we're with Paul Bettany. That's, I get names confused, so y'all don't roast me. Um, Paul Bettany is Vision from Marvel. That's right. right. Yeah. I, you know, I totally forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> He's <laughs> the Marvel connection. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Vision. Yeah. I get names wrong all the time, so when I get something right, I just have to, like, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> yeah, so. That's really cool. Uh, you still talk to Paul Benny? You still in contact with him? You see him around again? You know, stuff like no, that? No, man. I I worked with him that one time, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and boy, no. I, I'm i sure if he ever met me again, he would not know who I was. But I just remember, I remember I, we were in like a trailer for, the, for hair and makeup. He was just the nicest guy. I was so nervous sitting next to him. And I just right. like, oh, I want to talk to him. But at the same time, I don't want to say anything stupid. stupid. And, right. and like the first thing I said was, uh, so do you like being married to Jennifer Connelly? And he was like, uh, yeah, I guess. Why are you talking about my wife? Because uh, I'm a weirdo. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's something I would do. If I'm going to be honest. Like, that, that'd be something I'd do. <laughs> yeah. Just. Yeah, I've said so many stupid stuff. things to so many important people. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what are some role models for your acting career? Like people you look up to? Oh man, you know I always loved Denzel Washington, and uh, frankly, yeah, that guy is just a pro. Obviously, I did work with him a couple times. Equalizer one and Equalizer two, and you know, uh, that's that's like the standard cliche answer right like who are your favorite <laughs> actors Denzel Washington obviously but the guy is just something else you know he's got a presence also like nice you know what I mean like that's right. amazing that's really cool so frankly if I could name two people it would be again Keanu Reeves and Denzel Washington like if I could have the career of Keanu Reeves I would be a happy man that guy feel, it feels like he can do whatever Honestly, though, he can do whatever, and people love him. So there you go. You know, right. that, those are the guys. Oh, also my boy Liang Yang, from from England, who joined us. Uh, he's watching right now. He's he is the uh, he what was his face jo John Lark from Mission Impossible Six. You know the the dude in the bathroom fight, he's doing yes. this Asian guy. Yeah, I always say it's me, but it's actually him. Anyways, he's joined us. He's another <laughs> dude I look up to. I like him. I like him a lot. So yeah. <laughs> Nice. That's yeah. really cool. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't really get a lot of um guests, big name people in the live. It's kind of like, you know. <laughs> you also have Amy Johnson here too. That's big fan cool. of Amy Johnson. She used to be a, a Black Widow stunt double. Now she's obviously acting on her own. Yeah, man. She was on this for a minute. Yeah. Wow. I know you do stunts too, so like how do you how do you balance acting and like doing stunts and stuff like that? So, oh, well, yeah. So, for a while there, it was there was no balance. It'd be like 
you know, you're either up for a stunt job or you're either right. up for an acting job and you have to right. choose one or the other, right? And for a long right. time, I was kind of letting the acting kind of go and trying to go for the stunt job because I knew that was solid. And then after a while, I was just like, no, I, I can't. So I don't really do stunts anymore, thankfully. Oh. Yeah, so now it's just pure acting. So there's kind of no real balance there. Right now, right. the only thing I'm trying to balance out is unemployment and <laughs> auditioning. You know, yeah. like, you're right. You know, let's, I, that's, let's get real. Let's get real. Right. <laughs> how did, so yeah, that's another question. Like, how are you balancing everything going on with the pandemic? Obviously, Hollywood isn't yeah. really doing a lot of productions and stuff. And you know, well, so. yeah, I mean, for me, I feel like my career has always been kind of slow. So I don't really feel too much of a difference. But even me, I'm starting to get stir crazy up in here. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, can, can the town get back to doing right stuff. now now i'm starting to think about doing insane things like oh maybe i should do a TikTok, and it's like who's gonna want to watch a damn near 40 year old man do a TikTok? <laughs> like watch me sing wop like nobody's gonna want to watch that so i'm just like i don't even know man uh you know the, the, the things that really <laughs> brighten my day are like if i uh, get like a voiceover auditions like then it's like okay i can be productive you yeah. know fantastic Right. Other than that, I'm just like, I'm dying here, man. I'm just dying. Yeah. Right. You know? Do you like watch movies in your free time? Or of course. Games? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, ironically, I don't play too many games, but I do uh, watch. I just, I'm always on Netflix. Uh, I'm on uh, Amazon Prime. I just signed up for HBO Max for the seven-day trial because I'm not nice. sure that I want to spend the money for the actual subscription. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but Yeah. You know, right now I just rewatched uh, Ad Astra, uh, Brad Pitt's oh, space movie, and I was just like, eh, it's better the second time, I guess. The first time I was not impressed. But yeah, I'm always <laughs> watching movies. Always they watching. They say movies. you are the biggest hater. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Brad, you could have done better. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, that's really dope. Okay, cool. Um, so what was your, what has been your worst acting experience so far? Worst? Oh, yeah. you really want to get into it? Let's go. Oh. Let's go. You really want to get into it? Well, you know, I can't name names, right? So I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to say a TV show, but I was on uh, this this uh, military-themed TV show. If you look at my IMDb, you can, like, do detective work. Anyways, man, <laughs> that, that was the worst. I'll tell you why it was worse. Because, okay, I just had this, I had this role where I thought, okay, I'm going to be, this is going to be great. I'm going to. I'm gonna like choreograph some fight with one of the actors and I'm gonna like, it's gonna be great. We're gonna vibe. I was gonna finally get my chance to show my martial arts skill. My dream come true. Yeah. It was not a dream come true, dude, right? Because we butted heads, right? For a variety of reasons, uh, mostly ego on uh, both sides, right? To the point where it was like, we were gonna murder each other on the day of shooting. And we literally were like fighting like hardcore. The, and there were, there were points in the, in, in the choreo where, where this guy who, uh, re, again, rename, shall name, w remain nameless, right? You can see how <laughs> like, amped I am. I'm like stuttering, I'm so angry. Right. And, you know, so he'd do his choreo, which all involved like, I'm just gonna kick your ass. I'm just gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna beat you up. I'm gonna punch you, I'm gonna kick you. I just got so fed up with it. I was like, okay, tell you what, I'm changing all the choreo. Fine, you wanna punch me? You wanna kick me? Cool, but I'm blocking every single one. And, I, and when you actually do a hit, that I'm supposed to like react to. I'm not gonna react. I'm like, mm, what's up? What's up? What's oh up? Because that was the only thing I could do. You know, perfect way. Dude, I had to apologize to the producers because they were like, "We heard that you're causing trouble on set." I was like, "What? Is this dude? Is this dude? I'm professional. I'm professional. I never heard a person a day in my life. Like, yeah, that that made me like that was." horrendous you know and, and then we had to keep filming other scenes right. and then we had another fight scene too where like they basically wrote off my character because there was just too much real life drama and i was like Jeez. oh fine and then they made, they made my character die in like the lamest way possible i was like you know and that's showbiz baby you just gotta right. roll punches so that right. was probably <laughs> the least fun you know right. okay. that was the least fun one I'm about to be going Batman mode on your IMDb now. So, <laughs> <laughs> to do some detective work. Um, so, 
now you, that you said your worst, what has been your best? And I can kind of guess this, but go ahead. Go ahead. What has been my best? Yes, best so far. My favorite. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Spider-Man, that ranks right up there, you know? Spider-Man, because it was a long project. Right, that was like three years right. of us doing the thing, and you know, you become like a family, and everybody's very cool. And again, no egos. Everybody's very nice. I was the meanest guy on set. You know, <laughs> that's always nice. You're always, you're working with friends, you know, and you have cool parts, right? And, and they respect you. Right. That was really nice. You know, initially, Mr. Negative was just going to be like the intro boss level, kind of like a king. Oh, you know, okay. Just the tutorial, but Jacinda, who was the the lead art director, and a couple other people, kind of they they and Brian Intahar, obviously they they changed the script, you know, to make Mr. Negative's role a little bit bigger. So that's been kind of my biggest role to date, right? Uh, in the gaming world, for sure. So awesome. yeah, I'm glad they didn't do that boss kingpin type deal with you because that would have been. A complete race I, opportunity, man. When, when I got the job, I was just happy to work, man. I was like, cool, whatever. Man, right. That's cool. <laughs> nice. So for Mr. Negative, you did, he looks like you, so I would assume you did like mocap and stuff. Yes. Or... Yeah, they did the face capture, mm -hmm. uh, which is just wild, right? You see, they literally take your face, put it into three dimensions, and right. they give you whatever they want. You're like a, you're just a puppet, right? And then, yeah, I did the mocap for it as well. Uh, did was able to do a lot of my own fights for that because initially they had a stunt double for me which was very nice i'm always like yeah but then again my ego kind of so maybe yeah. it was my fault the other <laughs> show but my ego was like wait a minute i could do some of this stuff yeah so they they let they were gracious enough to let me play around especially with the sword stuff so that was really fun that's awesome um What's the most difficult thing about stunts, like for you personally, like getting in shape? Is it kicking or flipping or uh, that most you know, difficult for, for me personally, anytime I land on my back, I hate that. I'm always worried about getting paralyzed. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, I can anything so else, good. anything else, you're golden, right? Like heights, whatever, whatever. But uh, everything always requires somebody to land on their back. I, I hate right. that. So, uh, yeah, I think. Obviously, the risk of injury is the most difficult thing. Frankly, for me anyways, I don't know how it is for a lot of other people, but I'm pretty good about everything, right? Like, just pretty confident. But yeah. then the second they're like, action, all of a sudden, everything that could go wrong. Yeah, Adam goes, is correct. Right, exactly. yeah. My boy Adam's right. Take two or take three. This is one thing that they always say about stunts. It's like, yeah, cool. Anybody can do a fall once, but can you do it seven times? It's like, <laughs> that's so true. But for me, the, the biggest fear is just like anything that could go wrong, all of a sudden floods my brain. Like you could literally get hurt. You could die. There's you so many different, different ways. ways. Right. On the simplest thing, walking up a stair. Like, trust me, I'm like, oh, let me think about how I could potentially. How <laughs> Right. How could I cripple myself with just doing this wrong, you know? So that that was always the nerve wracking stuff. Got a lot in common. I'm like that all the time. Like I just yeah. think of how whenever I do something or like look into something, I just think, how could this go wrong? What's going on? Like how <laughs> can I like I do I do exactly. like that, like, all the time. Exactly. So. And th and then acting, you know, acting is different but equally stressful because right. I think the hardest part any for me anyways is kind of a you know, find your mark, right? It's like, right. sometimes there's a lot of things you gotta do, man, mm -hmm. right? Especially with mocap, it's like, all right, so you're gonna go over there, you're gonna press this button, then you're gonna walk over there. There's like 15 different things you have to do while saying your lines, being right. emotionally connected, and right. still be able to hit your mark and, and the places that you need to be at. It's like, uh, it's like Tetris, mental right. Tetris. Right, and that's why I congratulate you again for doing this because it's just like a lot to think about and do and to like stay in the character and get yeah. the vibe and feel it. And right. You have to think about how to say the lines or make the line more, you know, sinister or evil. That's right. or like there's just like a lot that goes behind it that I don't think people kind of understand. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that's what I always give props to voice actors as well. Like you, because it's like, you know, you have to 
do certain things with the way you speak or the way you talk to certain people and you, there's, there's a lot that goes behind it it's just a lot yeah exactly so yeah, yeah. so spider-man I guess to talk about that. That's the biggest thing. I guess the elephant in the room. You did Spider Man, Mr. Negative. That's yeah. one of the biggest. I think that's the highest selling video, a uh, super video game, right? Because I was that's looking. That's right. How does I think of all time so far. Yeah. So how yeah. does it feel to be a part of a project like that? Like, how do you feel? Like, seeing it, seeing how people feel. Like, how does it feel? I mean, you know, pride, proud is an understatement. I think relief. For me, it's actually relief because I'm such a competitive guy, right? That I'm like, I just need one thing. I just need one thing that I can like be super proud of right. in this business. Because you know, actors, we can go through our entire career, uh, and and people could just never recognize us. Or or, or aren't you that guy that was the waiter and that one thing? You know, it's like. Right. So it's very nice to be able to like finally have like one thing that I can say, hey, that was me, kids or whatever, right? For, yeah. for all time, that was me doing that thing. Yeah. Right. And you literally, like, you literally look just like him. Like, if Marvel were to say, <laughs> we're going to do a Spider-Man movie, we're going to cast Mr. Negative, they could literally cast Oh, you, well, you know, kid. that always annoys me, too, because I see on, look, trust me, I stalk myself on Google, right? But it's just like, <laughs> there's so many fan casts, right, of oh, Mr. Negative in a film. And then they're like, well, let's get that guy. Let's get that guy. It's like, hello? I'm, I'm right, right, I'm right here. here. Yeah. I try yeah. not to take it personally, but you know, it's, it's right. funny when that happens. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, you know, like you could do it. Would you be up for that if Marvel were like, "Hey, we want of to do like Disney Plus or like a side or Yeah. Listen, any way I can get onto any one of those Marvel things, I would totally do it. I got my eye on Namor, though. Frankly, I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to work yeah. out because I'm like, get me on that Namor kick. You know, right. I want to yeah. get in the room for that. You know, I missed out on being in Shang Chi, right? I auditioned for a couple things on that, but it's like, uh, it's like, fine, whatever. Let them have the, that stuff. I want Namor, man. I'm gunning for that. Namor, so we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I can see. Now that you bring it up, I can really see how it's whoa. I'm just saying, give me, the, give me the crow's hair. And the, <laughs> yeah. The, you know You're what like, I'm saying? Look at this jawline. Come on, everybody. <laughs> I guess. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, just need to gain I just need to gain some muscle, but it will be all right. It will be all right. Right. Yeah. I would yeah. I would love to see his name. That would, I, wow. That's actually a really good casting. Hold on. Why I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm putting it out there in the universe, you know? I could, that'd be really yeah. cool. So what was it like working with Yuri as Spider-Man? I mean, Yuri is the, Yuri kind of reaffirmed my faith in actors. Because, you know, he's, he's obviously such a big name in voice acting. Right. I didn't know what it'd be like to be uh, filming mocap with him. Uh, he, no attitude. Just honestly a genuine guy. So much so that I was like, hmm, this is an act. You know, after the yeah, third right. week, I was like, wait, maybe he's actually really nice. You know, he's just the nicest guy. Uh, very generous, uh, you know, willing to play with the scenes. So, yeah. It was easy, man. The whole shoot was easy. Didn't have a hard day, a single day. I like day. that military TV show. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's really cool. That's really cool. That's good to hear. I mean, he's, he's done so much. He's been Sasuke and Naruto. Yes. Now he's Spider-Man. I wonder what else he's going to do. Like, he can uh, do anything. Yeah. Like, I mean, he, he can't tell us because he's on so many secret projects, but yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now um, coming up later this year, they got a Miles Morales game. Are you involved yes. with that at all? Or you, I, you... I don't know if I can say, but I, I'm sure I can say. I, you know, as far as Mr. Negative, no. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, being able to do some of the mocap for, you know, just random thugs, ma random bad guys, you'll be fighting me, you know. You'll be fighting my body. <laughs> okay, awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, okay, so they were, they were nice enough to bring me a couple days on that. So, yeah, I'm excited for that, too, for sure. And Najee, also sweetest kid, you know, sweetest, talented, talented dude. And this is his time, this game. This is a perfect time for this game, you know. Right. This is what this That's country needs is a Miles Morales Spider-Man game. Heck, yeah. yeah. I'm no. down. Yeah, I'm excited. How long has the Miles Morales been in production? Like, how long have they been working on it? Uh, well, my experience has been like two years, but I'm sure it's been. 
I'm sure there's different. Yeah, I'm sure. I can't exactly speak to that officially. So right. I know that, yeah. For me, it's been off and on for that amount of time. So where, when you so when you finished Spider-Man PS4, did you like hop over right over to Miles or was it like a grace period and then you? Yeah, there was some, there was some time. There was some uh, free time on our end. Yeah, I, you know, and Insomniac, yeah, who knows what they're doing? Secret, secret lab of secrets <laughs> and magic. Right, right. <laughs> That's dope. Um, so another thing I love to speak to you about is Gotham Knights. You were yeah. Everyone. Woo. Our Red Hood. And I freaked out. I was like, Woo. yes. I, <laughs> you have no idea. My favorite DC character has to be Red I love Red Hood. Awesome. He's one of my favorites. You play one of my favorite characters. Me Don't too. <laughs> okay. Me too. Me too. So I'm yeah. really excited to see you play that. So what can you, what are you excited the most for people to see from this game? Uh, okay. What am I excited the most? I think I'm, I, I want people to see every night's story, right? So they're putting a lot of effort into that. Um, yeah. I'm I'm curious to see how it ends myself, you know, because right. they're only giving us piecemeal pieces. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, they kind of yeah. gave us a, a rough overview, but they didn't give us like the specific scenes and things. I mean, they gave us some ideas for some stuff. So there are some cool scenes there that uh, uh, they're shooting now, and then we're gonna do some voiceover uh, soon. I think I don't I don't even know what's going on, but I don't even know if I can talk about that. But yeah, basically. <laughs> right. Nobody published this right now. Don't so I don't want to get in trouble. But basically, yeah, I'm excited for everybody to just see the stories. Every one of them. There's so much work that went into each character's story. So, yeah, it's 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 deep. Yeah. What what traits in Red Hood do you see in yourself? Oh, that's good. My <laughs> burning sense of justice. I swear to God. When I'm on the road, I'm like, I got so much road rage because I'm like, I get mad at people who don't, who do bad things to other people, not even me. I'm like, you <laughs> cut that dude off. Whoa, oh, I'm going to get you. The justice. Just yeah. uh, obviously, some anger. You know, I got some boiling resentment, some rage, right? And I think that's what's really fun is being able to just lean into that sort of, uh, that emotion, that characteristic. But he's also sarcastic right mm -hmm. he's also got this dark humor he's not like goofy right but he is very he is actually very funny you know and also strong like my girlfriend said <laughs> strength <laughs> um so i feel like that was just the perfect that's the perfect character for me i just love to play all of that you know he's got everything he's got everything that i want to be the, the action Right, he's got right. the guns. He's got the the, the yeah. wit. He's got the anger. He's right. got the cool mask. Like, come on! Absolutely, yeah. yeah. What did you do with your voice to perfect what you wanted to do with Red Hood? Like, what did you do? Well, well, I'll be honest. I listened to a lot of uh, yeah. The first time I was told, okay, you're gonna be Red Hood, I'm like, okay, great. You know, because there's obviously uh, Troy Baker voiced him. Uh, and obviously the master Jensen Ackles, right? Yes. So oh man! Like, oh, uh, everybody's just gonna. Oh, uh, there's gonna be so much expectation there. So, you know, I went back, re-listened to all of those guys. But the funny thing is, with Jensen Ackles, when I like e even before this game, when I go into auditions where I have to be cool or tough or something, mm -hmm. just something, to give it a little something. I always, I do this with my girlfriend. I always practice what I call my Jensen Ackles voice. So this was even before I got the game. So I, you know, I just kind of talk like Jensen Ackles. I kind of talk like Jensen Ackles, right? I just, that's what I would do. So I'll be honest, you know, I'm trying to get a little bit of that Jensen Ackles, just that, I don't even know what he's got, some sort of cowboy draw going. Yeah, so yeah, you There's did, something, yeah. there's something, you know? Yeah, right. so that's what I'm trying to do with that. Okay, that's cool. Have you spoken to any of the voice actors or was this sort of, uh, you know, research on your own type of deal, like li watching movies, reading comics, stuff like oh, that? Oh, yeah, like, I feel like, well, the, the cool thing is our cast, when we were working together, 
it, we all felt the same way. We we're like, okay, we are weird. We weirdly are no exaggeration. These characters, like Chris, really is Nightwing, this Boy Scout, right? <laughs> and, and and America really is a Batgirl, like super smart and a leader, right? And, and Sloan really is Robin, just like bright eyed and ah, <laughs> bright eyed, yeah, yeah. guys. And I really am, you know, very ornery and just like in a bad mood some most of the times, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so in terms of that, I think it was very easy for all of us to, to get into our characters. Uh, so for me, anyways, doing the research uh, was just on my own time. I'm sure they all did their research as well on their own time, but it wasn't something that we discussed with each other. Like, oh, how are you going to sound? This right, is straight right. up. The first day we actually did something, we, we, we did the thing and we were like, okay, cut. Oh my God, we really are these people. This is going to be <laughs> fun. So... That's awesome. That's really dope to hear. I'm excited to play. When I saw that trailer, I was just like, wow, this, this is going to be something. I'm just really dope to see how everyone plays. Um, so of course, I'm excited to see Red Hood. Like, come on. Like, I'm excited to see you play Red Hood. I'm just excited to see how everyone moves and plays and interconnects into the story. Like, how do they take on the mantle of being Batman without being Batman? You know what I'm saying? Like, see. Exactly. Right? You see that? So I'm really You'll excited. have to get the game. But yeah, initially, you know, when the when the reveal happened, I know a lot of people had their reservations about the RPG elements, you know, the kind of look of the game. And right. thankfully, you know, Fleur and, and Patrick, uh, you know, the heads of the game, they, they came out with subsequent interviews where they, I think, put a lot of those uh, issues to rest, hopefully for the fan base out there. Like a lot of the RPG elements, they're, they're there for looks, uh, but you can actually disable them you know, like the level bars and, uh, oh, no. okay. you know, there's no level gating. So it's not like you have to grind to get to a certain level and you're like, oh, I, I can't, I can't access this map. Right. It's like, no, all of the, the whole thing is open world. It's all there for you. Um, it's not game as a service. Right. So yeah. uh, that's nice. You, people won't have to pay to do X, Y, Z. So oh, yeah. yeah, hopefully now that we have all that out there that people will be, you know, into into the product. Yeah, so I'm excited too, though. That's really good to hear. That puts me, my, my fears to rest too, because um, the new Avengers game, I don't know if you heard about it, but um, they're doing... Yeah, they're doing a beta. Yeah, they're right. doing like microtransactions, and right. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I'm just not a big fan of like when games do that. Like, right. the Battle Pass for Fortnite is fine with me. Like, that's fine. Right. It's a free game. You don't have to spend, like, it's V-Bucks, it's fine. Right. But I just don't like when they make games so grindy and so try. Like, I just right. don't. Well, you know, and, 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 you know, hopefully with Avengers, uh, you know, they'll they'll kind of work out the kinks now that the beta's done. And right. you know, maybe they can they can finagle it to, to lessen some of the game of service stuff and just the that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And, and right. hopefully, like I said, the developers for all these games, I know all the developers look at the comments. I know they look at the comments. There's no right. way that they don't. So they, I think they know what the gamers want. And, and we are in a time where, I mean, look at the Snyder Cut. It's like, I think gamers, right. are gonna, I think fans kind of get what they want. Like, right. they, they do have that kind of pull now. So we'll see. You excited for the uh, Snyder Cut? Have you been following you No, know, weirdly, yeah. Weirdly, yes. And I'm again, not saying this now that I'm in a DC game, but uh, when the original Batman v Superman came out, I remember watching it in the theaters and being fairly disappointed, right? And then I gave the ultimate cut a try, right? And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it's still problematic. The whole Martha, all that stuff, right? Yeah, okay. But overall, a much better experience and so that actually became one of the movies on my rotation, just because it's a it's a beautiful movie to and just visually beautiful and the action scenes are cool. And so when I heard about the Justice League Snyder cut, because again Justice League, same experience. I was like, wait a minute, this is not yeah. at all what I was expecting. Right. So then Snyder cut comes out. You know, regardless of how it came out, I know it's also problematic too that there's pressure, blah blah blah. But I will just say, like, yes. End of the day, I'm excited to see Zack Snyder's vision for it. Because it's already, I think the trailers alone make it look 10 times better than the product that we got. So Let's be honest. Now, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, so. see, see more of Cyborg. You know, Cyborg is a character I'm not even interested in, but to see the the stuff that he put in the trailer mm -hmm. for Snyder Cut, I was like, oh, okay, this is something different. This yeah, it gives you some, yeah. That was my yeah. biggest problem with um, the original Justice League was it just, I wasn't a big fan of the score first off, and I'm glad they're bringing back the original piece. Yeah, right. I didn't like, I felt really like bland to me. I know they got the original guy from Batman 89 to do yes. Batman stand, which right. was cool, but everything. Danny it just, Elfman, that's right. Yeah, yeah Danny Elfman. But it was, just, it was just different, you know? It's a right. different vibe, a different feel, and so to right. get the the original, what is it, Junkie XJ or whatever? Yeah, no, Junkie XL and Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Yes, like, I'm excited for that. Yes, I absolutely. Am. I love. I'm gonna be honest. When um, that's the only thing I love about those movies is the the theme and the story. Agree. I have yeah. I have the Batman v Superman soundtrack on my phone when I work out because I'm like, oh, oh yes, cool. this is gonna get me pumped. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I yeah. think so. I have a save. Um, I have two more questions for you. Um, yeah. This has been a great conversation, by the way. This is my awesome. Favorite. Yeah, it's, been, it's really fun. Well, where are you at? Are you are you in Queens right now? Is that? Oh no, I'm in Georgia. I moved a while ago. Oh, you're in Georgia. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, my girlfriend uh, and I were in Savannah just last year. So, yeah, wow. uh -huh. that's really cool. Where I'm, in Georgia are you at? Fable. Okay, nice. I've never been. It's so. <laughs> I just have to say nice out of politeness. It could be a dump. I don't know. Hopefully, it's nice. <laughs> You seem like a nice dude, so maybe they have nice people there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's a it's a nice vibe. It's very um, it's very country. If you're like, if it depends on the person, you know what I mean. Like if you're yeah. more into the big city, New York, like my mom, not into the city. Okay, not in the city. You'd like it. You'd like it. You'd okay, like it. Awesome. but if you're like my mom, who is like. Newark, born and raised, New right. York, the city, Times Square. You're gonna hate it. <laughs> she, 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 she gotcha. doesn't like it. All right. gotcha. but, yeah. So, but um, yeah, it's nice. It's it's very different from New York. Yeah. It's very quiet. Like at night, I remember I'd go to sleep as a kid. Yeah. In, in New York, and you hear cars like zooming through. Like, oh, yeah. Felt like they were going 90 miles For per sure. hour. Like you hear sure. it, and it would just it, it it was all it was just all over the place. But it here is very conserved is very like you hear quiet. cicadas. Yeah, very yes, quiet. Very right. cicadas. So oh, it's really... cicadas. Yeah, you are country then. <laughs> yeah, cicadas. Yeah, man. Yeah, you hear. Yeah, oh, uh, I remember. Oh. Go. Go for it. Oh, You remember well, what? Oh, I, I remember one time I was sleeping and I heard like this weird like buzzing. Like I didn't know what it was. I was like, Mom, what's that button? She was like, it's cicadas. I was like, what is what? What are those? What's a, what's a like, cicada? John cicada? <laughs> yeah. So I was just yeah. So I yeah. hear it and I would get weirded out. And then I saw one. I was like, that's a cicada. Like if you look at them, they're like weird. I'm used to right. like big rats and cars. Agreed. Yeah. They're gross. They're scary, man. They're scary. Well, right. I'm glad even in Georgia, man. I'm glad you're you're not even in Georgia. They they make every event, they make every Marvel movie in Georgia. But I'm glad you're doing your whole your whole uh, you know uh, reporting on entertainment out yes. there, man. That's dope. That's cool. I know. I just to want to take it to me. I, I want to take away from you, but to just talk about that real quick. How this started was um, it was just like a shot in the dark. If I'm gonna be honest, I had no intentions of interviewing people like you or uh, Royce Johnson from Daredevil like I yeah. didn't know this was going to happen I one of my favorite bands Grey Days was making an album for out do you know who Chester Bennington is the singer of course yeah. so that was Rest his first peace. band Rest yeah. Of, yeah one of my favorites and they were making out they made uh I'll show hold on let me <laughs> I get it no you can't, you can't leave the screen because that's right. what I'm <laughs> But the first album, it was called Amends. And I entered, I asked uh, the people who run the account, can I get an interview? And they were like, absolutely. I said, wait, I had to double take. I was like, did you just say yes to me? I'm, an, I'm nobody. I, I'm nobody. So I was just like, yo, this is really dope. So I interviewed them, and it's just been an amazing yeah, journey. Yeah, like, man. You know, Look at yeah. you. You're not nobody. You're somebody. Look <laughs> right. Look at this. It's been an amazing journey, so yeah. I'm just glad. That awesome, I get man. Yeah. Congrats. That's cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So um, one of my questions to you is, what roles do you gravitate towards more? Like, 
do you like more authoritarian, like tough guy, or more of like, you know, like shy? And <laughs> you know, what's funny is when I was younger, I, I always loved to do the, the funny kind of Jim Carrey kind of roles. You're right. And then I got into this mode all the way up until just a few years ago where I was like, I need to be military, tough dude, tough guy. Right. Tough, right. right? And so now, I, now I'm getting into this mode where I hope anyways, you know, for the next five, 10 years, even like I pray if, if I'm able to, you know, to, to get these kind of roles that are a nice uh, mix, like a balance almost, right? Like, right. And that's why Red Hood is very cool for me. Is because, right, I was just about hey, to say, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not so dark and he's not, he's definitely not like super like Jim Carrey funny. Right. But at the core, uh, I guess what I want to do is this. Long story short, I want to be like, I want to play good people. I know that sounds like cliche and weird, right. but it's just like, it's true. Like, if I could play people who I can see there's a core of goodness, right? Like, that's nice. Because there was, again, like, a, like I said, at a time not too long ago, I would happily be freaking evil. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that was fun for me. Like, now it's like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. You know, I don't feel right, like we have right, too right. much of that in this world in real life, you know? Right. And so, yeah, if I can be the good guy, that would be nice. And obviously, uh, you know, I still want to do more kind of action stuff. Yes, right. I do. You know, so I, I, that's kind of my thing. I'm not really ready yet for like rom-coms, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would feel weird like in a rom-com, like, Right. You know, um, but yeah, like my boy Adam says, like it is important to play good people in this world. So right. just good people, you know, people who are fighting for, for something good, right? That, yeah. Is it cut out? Oh, he did it? Oh, did it cut out? <laughs> oh yeah, it cut out. I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, listen, oh, yeah, you cut out a little bit. I was like, what's going yeah. on? But yeah. <laughs> so, no, anyway, no, that's my long story short. Yeah, good people. I just want to play good people. Yeah. Nice. And I guess it's a per I always like to end my interviews off with this question. I've done this more recently, but there's a lot going on in the world. We got the pandemic, we have riots and protests, you know, yes. we just lost Chadwick. There's a lot going on. The emotions are high. Yeah. So what would you say what would your message be? What would your message be to the world during the current times that we live in? Oh man. I guess. I don't really have a message other than like, I get it. I hear you. I, you know, frankly, I hear both sides, right? It's just, it happens that one side is definitely wrong, right? Like, right. They just don't know that they're wrong, you know? But like, yes, there's, I, I struggle with that every day too, man. You, there's so much bad news out there and there's so much uh, bad stuff happening there and, and you feel like hopeless. I just have to, I just have to hope that there are more of us than there are of them. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just yeah. have to hope that there are more people who are down for equality. Right. And also, I'd also say this, Hey, it's annoying too. Even equality is kind of annoying. Sometimes <laughs> you're like, I get it. SJW. Ah, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about this stuff. SJW <laughs> ruined Star Wars. Yes. Okay. Fine. Right. But like, <laughs> Well, I just you know, like let's just like all be cool. I know it's just it's the dumbest message, but it's true. I guess I that's all I have to say is I hear you, man. I hear all of it. Yes, and I believe it. I feel it too. So yes, we're all just trying to do our thing. That's it. Right. Absolutely. Maybe maybe that's the message, right? Somebody has said it better than me. I don't know who said it. David Diggs or somebody was like, <laughs> all of this, all this bad stuff is out here to distract you from doing what you want to do, right? Right. Do what you want to do. That, I think that might be the best thing. Because then, you know, regardless of people are racist or they're sexist, or they hate you. Look, everybody hates everybody. This is America. We Let's all be honest that was <laughs> yeah. Nobody gives an F about anybody. That's America. That's the American way, right? <laughs> We're supposed to just do what we want to do. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Fight for that. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well... Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, man. This has been an absolutely amazing experience. Absolutely. Um, this has just been fun, full of laughter. 
Yeah. Really needed this right now. Um, for real, for real. Um, so yes. thank you for that. It's been it's great. Yeah, man. Congrats on everything too. And thank you, Adam, my boy, for sticking around. You watch the whole. Yeah, I see him. Yeah, he's been here since. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yes. Thanks so much. Right on. Cool. All right. Well, um, I hope to have you back on the Gotham Knights. Dude, yeah, hit me up when the game comes out. We'll talk again. Hopefully, I'll be That's a superstar. You know, seriously, I'll be a superstar and be like, ah. I don't take requests for interviews. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. Um, All right. Definitely going to stay in contact with you. Yes. Have an amazing day. You I'll too. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. Right, thank man. you so much. Bye. Have a great one.